Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, welcome to the Dean Show, peace be unto you, I'm Eddie, your host, and today we have on the show to share his story with us is the bodyguard, former bodyguard for the world-renowned, famous, heavyweight champion of the world. Now you got to know this man, Muhammad Ali, that's right, Muhammad Ali, his former bodyguard, is going to be talking to us, Nilayn, Sheikh Nilayn Muhammad. He's going to be on in a few, so you don't want to go nowhere because it's going to be an exciting show when we come back here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger, Allah. La ilaha illallah Allah There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Welcome back to The Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host. And just in a couple minutes, we're going to be bringing out the former bodyguard, Nilayn Muhammad was also a black belt in many different martial arts. He also started training the most effective martial art, not just because I trained at Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but because the Gracie family indeed proved that it was. So he is somebody that I got a chance to sit with, very remarkable man. Before we bring him out, we're just gonna bring you up to speed on some current news. Some things that are going on in the community. We want to talk to you about our brother, Noman Ali Khan. We want to send a shout out to him. He just had a baby boy. May Allah bless you and your family. We also have Chat Islam. Chat Islam with the sheikhs that everyone needs to know. Sayyid Adli, Sheikh Muhammad Sayyid Adli, and Salam Anamri, who I got a chance to be with down in India at the Peace Conference. Such a wonderful man. And I'd like to also thank all the other sheikhs that I had a chance to meet with down in India at the Peace Convention. They're doing some big things over there. Incredible peace, the solution to humanity. Tune into Peace TV, wonderful channel. Now, they can be watched at chatislam.com. Check that out. You want to increase your knowledge, look into the programs that they have on the weekends, Friday and Saturdays. Now, before we bring out Nilayn Muhammad, former bodyguard for Muhammad Ali, a couple more things we want to bring you up to speed with Islamic Online University, Dr. Bilal Phillips. Check it out. It's free. Increase your knowledge and earn all these wonderful rewards. Another thing that you want to really check up into we also have a wonderful brother, and many of you who are out there, thank you for supporting the Dean Show. This brother actually started a Dawa Drive, DVD Drive. You know, we started the DVDs for Dawa. We've gotten a lot of these wonderful sheikhs, a lot of these dua, a lot of these people who are out there trying to help people understand the most misunderstood way of life. And we've gotten to speak with them, sharing their stories, sharing their experiences, sharing their knowledge putting it on where you can actually watch all of it for free at thedeanshow.com but some people want to have the means to be able to give it to people so we've put it down made the shows into a volume one with two discs that you can go ahead and share it with the world we've done a lot of the hard work now all you got to do is contribute buy one buy in bulk that's what we're trying to really get you to do for the different Dawah organizations. Get these DVDs and get them out to the world. Get them out so everybody can share in this wonderful reward and get to know more about this way of life of peace. Peace through submitting yourself to the one who is the owner of peace, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's right. So check out Half Date. The drive is going on at halfdate.com. And the brother, by the way, is a beautiful brother who started also HalfDean.com. He's trying to get married. So we encourage 
all the sisters to get your guardian. Check out halfdean.com and see if we can get those single people to get together, not to go on dates, not to go out and do things that they shouldn't be doing, but doing it the right way, doing it how the creator of the heavens and the earth wants you to do it. That's right, through marriage. So check out this brother Muhammad's website, Have Date. That's where you can learn more about the Dawah Drive, contribute, get involved so we can get the Dean Show out, so we can get this message of peace out to the world. And at the same time, check out Half Dean, and you can check out this brother. He put his portfolio there, and hopefully, inshallah, God willing, we can get this brother married. I think they're signaling we got our brother, former bodyguard for Muhammad Ali. That's right, Muhammad Ali. His former bodyguard, Sheikh Nalane. Sheikh Nalane, can you hear me, brother? Yes, I can hear you. Good, thank God. Thank you for being with us on the Dean Show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. This is my first time. So as we hear it, you used to be the bodyguard for the former champion of the world, heavyweight champion, the world famous Muhammad Ali. Yes, sir. For those people who might have been locked up in a room for a long time, they haven't been out, and they don't know who Muhammad Ali is, tell us a little bit about him, please. Well, Muhammad Ali was the former uh, heavyweight world champion uh, in the United States, uh, well, all over the world, and <clears throat> uh, what he done in the boxing world is unmatched, and what he also done outside the boxing world is unmatched. So, uh, most people, he was one of the most recognized faces on the planet, and um, I haven't had this uh, gracious opportunity to work with him as a bodyguard. Someone might think, why would a champion, heavyweight champion like him, need a bodyguard? Well, there's certain things that he uh, can't do for himself. You know, you don't have eyes on the side of him and behind him, so you need someone to keep certain people away from him that are approaching him and that have a critical eye and watching and protecting him because he was a very public figure and even though Muhammad Ali was a person, there is a person that everybody seems to love, but you do have people who maybe have some mental sickness, uh, illness, and that might approach him uh, in a way that's inappropriate. So the job of the person to secure a uh, figure like that is to make sure that this don't happen. Now you're also a top-ranking martial arts black belt, is that correct? Yes, I've been doing martial arts for a period of over 35 years. My teacher is Abdul Mutakatbir of the Swam Academy of Martial Arts that's in Jamaica, Queens, as well as in Not Atlanta, so Georgia. Uh, if you go to the website swammartialart.com, uh, you'll see what we teach is called uh, Kajufu Kaju Boxing, uh, Gedoru Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu so as a young man, tell us, did you grow up in a Christian household? Yes, I grew up in a... Um, what you could call it was uh, the infrastructure was uh, based on uh, Christianity. My father and mother, uh, I first started out as a Catholic, and then from there I moved on to, uh, 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 to, bap to becoming a Baptist. Is it true that your father was a deacon? Yeah, my father was a big deacon. Later on he got more immersed in the church. I, I'm from New York originally, but... <clears throat> Years ago, my father moved to Atlanta, bought property, and helped build a church with uh, over 1,500 members, and his name is engraved on the church because he died about six years ago, and his name is engraved on the church, and he was the head deacon of that church. He helped build it and finance it and everything. Elaine, tell us, did you grow up believing that Jesus was God and your Savior? Yes, this is where I was taught uh, that he was God and he was my save, my personal savior and I had accepted him. I was baptized, you know, dipped in water and, you know, and told that I had accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So tell us, Neelan, how did this change in your life happen? Well, that came about, um, I was a very troubled youth when I grew up. At the late age of 12 years old, I got in trouble and I was sent to youth hall. And from there, I just continue spiraling out of control because I really not, I really didn't have no rules and guidance in my in the household. My father and mother, they uh, went to church, you know, once in a while, but really, uh, rules from the scripture was not really uh, applied in the house. 
and I really didn't have no guidance. So the street gave me guidance, and I joined gangs and, you know, cliques and stuff like that, and I sort of spiraled out of control. And so by the age of 16 or 17, I was really on a mission of self-destruction, and at the age of 15, my father put me out of the house. Tell us a little bit about this baptism. Well, uh, they take you, and the day that I was supposed to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, uh, they have a, a either man-made pool or some water someplace and behind a curtain, and next thing I know, I was scared to death, and, and they, the reverend, he's in the, in the pool, and, he, and they say a few things, and they take you under the water in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, and I accepted this without real any knowledge. I didn't really get, I really didn't understand what I was doing. Tell us, what is the belief now, your belief now about the one who is so beloved and dear to our hearts, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? Well, alhamdulillah, by the guidance of Allah, and you know, there was another track of me before I became to this, uh, the Quran and Sunnah, and I guess you asked me about that, but to speed it up, um, I came to understand that uh, Jesus, in Islam we call him Isa, salam, may peace be upon him, uh, that he was a prophet of God, a major, one of the major prophets of God. And no prophet of God has ever declaimed uh, to be divine. Uh, they came with the divine message that God came, but they was not divine. They was human beings, and that God had raised up uh, spiritually, and they came with a message, and Isa Ali Salam came with the message of truth. How do you tackle the argument that some people adamantly make about Jesus being God? Well, I, I would say something quickly. Uh, my father, uh, before he died, I went to visit him uh, in, Georgia, in Georgia in the 80s. And when I was married at that time, uh, I had small children. And one of my daughters, uh, her name is Yasmin, and I hope she's watching this. Uh, she's an adult now, of course. She was in the room playing with her cousin. It was about 10 of her cousins. They was playing in the living room. And they had an argument. Uh, they was talking about Jesus, and her Christian cousins were saying Jesus was God. And Yasmin said, no, Allah is God. He's the only God. So my ex-wife, she was at the table. Uh, with me and she was pinching me because she was worried that my daughter was going to really bring this into the kitchen where we was having dinner, the dining room, and we was eating with my father, mother, brothers and sisters all at the table who are Christians. And surely she did. And she came directly to the table and she said, Daddy, they're saying that Jesus is God. Who is God? Is Jesus God? I told them that Allah is God. And my wife was very scared and I turned to her, my daughter, everything was quiet. And I said, that's right, Allah is God. And my father <clears throat> became very angry. He was disappointed that I was teaching my children this type of concept. So what happened, the next uh, morning, uh, my father had to go to the church to teach Sunday school because it was on a Saturday. And my mother and father was getting ready to dress, but they wasn't inviting me to come to the church. Number one, because I wore what was like a kameez clothing, uh, that was something like I have on now, and I had a, one of these kufi hats on. So he was uncomfortable. So they rushed out and left me, but the church was about half a block away from the house. So I decided <clears throat> to get dressed and go to the church. And when I opened the door of the church, um, I guess it's a record, there was our all eyes is on me. All eyes was on me because here I opened the door and they see this person with this kufi hat on, these funny looking clothes to them, strange clothes. And they looked and I was invited in and one of the ladies who was teaching the uh, Sunday school service, she invited me to sit with her large group, and my father was teaching the other group, and he started to sweat profusely. So they was talking about Musa, Moses, alay salam, may peace be upon him, and the things that he went through and everything. So what happened, to speed this up, uh, they asked me to make some comments, and I made some comments, just general knowledge that a Muslim has about these prophets, because we love them, and they're the same prophets in Islam, in Christianity, the same prophets in Islam, because it's one link, and they're all brothers, the prophets are brothers to one another. So the reverend or pastor must have had some type of device that he could hear what was going on in this big church. And he stepped out from the back, and he signaled to me to come to him. 
And then he invited me in the back room, and the pastor was, I guess, about 60 or 70 years old then. I was in my 20s. And he asked me, he said, you are not a Christian. I said, no, I'm not a Christian. He said, he said you're a Muslim. I said, yes, I'm a Muslim. And he asked me questions about the scripture, and he was very impressed at the answers I gave. He said, where did you learn this? I said, I learned this from the Quran, the book of Allah, uh, from the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was so convinced that what I was saying was truthful that he invited me to give the talk for the day. So when I came back out, they started playing the organ. That's a signal to the pastor to come out and start the sermon. Give us a demonstration of how this sounds like. Well, okay. It's take me near the cross. That's an old traditional song among Baptist people. So when he heard that, that was a signal to come out. The organ was playing. The people were saying that. So he came out, said, praise the Lord. He waved his hand. And everybody got quiet. And he said, we have a special guest with us today. My father's sweating profusely now. He's really concerned. And my mother and father, I mean, my, my mother and brother and sister were sitting on the front row. And their mouth was open like this, in disbelief. And as they were disbelieving me the night before, they were telling me I was all wrong. Here their pastor saw something in what I was saying was truthful. So what he said, he said, we have a special guest, and he called his name Neelam, which is pronounced Neelane, Muhammad. Now, he said, but uh, his brother, he's, he's uh, Deacon Nile's son. And now all eyes went on the, the deacon, because his son is a Muslim. He said, he's not a Christian, he's a Muslim. He said, but I find what he said was very truthful, and I want him to give the talk for the day. So I ended up giving the talk, and I was talking about Musa, Ali uh, Salam, uh, Moses, how the people gave him trouble as he was trying to give them the truth, how they rejected and they kept rebelling. Are uh, we going to do that the same today? So it went over very well. And then when I went back home, the pastor had called me in the back to meet with some other reverends. So my father and mother went home to help me about another hour. When I got home, opened the door, all my family was standing up on their feet and clapping like this. And my mother come and hugged me, my stepmother actually, she came and hugged me and said, uh, God bless you, um, I didn't know you was a man of the cloth. And my father, he just bowed his head and just shook my hand, you know, he said, good job, son, and basically that was it. And um, before he died, I'd done my best to explain the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. He accepted that there's only one God, but when I said Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he rejected it. So I made effort, and my mother's now in her 80s, and I need to visit her, my stepmother, and see if I can reach her. But I did the best I could at that time. So that's what happened. So now if someone asks you, who's paying the price for your sins now? What do you say? Well, the concept of dying from the sin and original sin, this is not a concept in Islam. As we know, Adam a.s. is the father of all men, and uh, Hawa, or Eve, is the mother of all uh, men and women and when they made their mistake in paradise and uh, uh, Allah in the Quran says uh, Karamna bini Adam we have honored the children of Adam and Allah and they made Tobah and gave and Allah forgave them so in Islam whatever you do is upon you you come in this world as a blank page and all your, whatever you do whether good or, good or bad is from you we don't have to worry about it being passed down to us. So there's no original sin. So I, don't, I do not have this view. And so when a Christian comes to me and says that Jesus died for your sins, etc., etc., um, I inform them of the Islamic point of view. Tell us your experience with the nation. Well, I was in the nation of Islam, and I came about that. As I said, I was a troubled, very troubled youth. And I came into the nation of Islam at a very young age. Uh, I was actually influenced by it at, at the age of 14 years old. And what happened, they used to be at the subway stations in New York, where they was all over. There was like ants everywhere in uh, New York. And in the, in the predominantly uh, ghetto areas, they was there. And this is unfortunate that the, the people of Quran and Sunnah, they was not available. So this was what was in my environment, so I thought this was Islam. And so one day I was going to the subway, and every morning this person would stop me. And he said, get your Muhammad speaks, your Muhammad speaks, get your Muhammad speaks. And I would try to avoid him, and I ended up buying a paper, and it had a picture of this man, big, fat, African-American black man, eating what appeared to be a rat. 
there was a cartoon with a rat going in his mouth and he was sweating profusely and it says uh, cat rat dog this is what a pig is made of this was the concept of the nation of Islam so I went home and that weekend there was a tradition in African American culture that we meet on Sunday morning and have breakfast so we have a breakfast and that breakfast consists of fat bag meat I don't know if they still anybody know what that is anymore but I remember it and bacon eggs and you know a lot of pork and I used to love eating pork stuff for la zine, but I used to love eating so what happened I wouldn't eat any of it so my father looked at me and my brother and sister said what's wrong with you how come you're not eating no meat how come you're not eating that I said I don't eat any more pork and then my father looked over and he said why are you not eating pork and I said I said because it has 999 diseases because this was the nation of Islam it was the brother had told me at the subway station and it says it's made of a cat rat and a dog and when I said that, he said, where you learn this from? I said, I, from the Nation of Islam. And he cursed Elijah Muhammad out at the table. And he took all the pork and poured it on my plate and made me eat it. And he didn't know about five or six years later that I, from this day forward, with my knowledge, I haven't ate, ate, I've eaten any of that since. And I joined. The, that's when I came about joining the Nation of Islam. Now, how did you make the transition from the nation, which is more of a nationalistic movement, to Islam, which brings all people from all nationalities, white, yellow, black, pink, purple, doesn't matter what color you are, real Islam brings people together as true brothers and sisters of humanity. Tell us, how did you make this transition to the real Islam? Well, I got from the Nation of Islam, I joined the Nation of Islam, um, as I told you, I was a troubled youth and I, I was incarcerated and I joined in, in, through the prison system and when I came out I met Minister Farrakhan he heard about the great things I've done in prison and so he said you're gonna do great work out here and I did a lot to promote the Nation of Islam I was a lieutenant in the Nation of Islam which is uh, I was an FOI first was the name of the military training of men uh, the fruit of the fruit of Islam and I, then I became a lieutenant uh, which I mean I give orders and teach those who are processing they call them processing brothers uh, how to be a good member in the nation of Islam and give them instruction so um, when I what made me leave the nation of Islam was deaf the, the leader of the nation of Islam at that time the, uh, Mr. Elijah Muhammad at that time you should call him the honorable Elijah Muhammad Mr. Elijah Muhammad who uh, teacher was Master Farad Muhammad and you have to understand it just came about in the 30s and there was ignorance was very prevalent in the African-American community and it was also a community of hopelessness there was no hope and so this man came with some hope and he used a psychology that said that the black man was God so he had to use a formula that worked to make us look at ourselves differently because we hated ourselves and so it worked and he said the white man was the devil and at that time uh, Caucasian people was beating up, lynching us, hanging us, and everything else. So it was easy for me to, to conceive that he was the devil. So after some time being a nation of Islam, I had a problem with that picture of Master Farad Muhammad because he looked white. And when I showed it to some people, they said, that's a white man. I hid it in my heart and my mind to the members of the nation of Islam that I had a problem with that. So when Elijah Muhammad died, February the 25th, uh, 1975, I believe, um, I was devastated. I was rushed to Chicago as a lieutenant. I was informed that he had passed on, that I was on the plane and everything. And then he told us the next person would be God himself. So, you don't mind, I was thinking that God was going to walk up on a platform and give a talk. This did not happen. It was Imam Warfdin Muhammad. And gradually, he moved us closer and closer to the Quran and Sunnah until eventually he started talking about the teaching of his father was incorrect. And so I took my Shahada in 1975 under the hands of Imam Warfati Muhammad. My name, uh, Nilayne uh, Muhammad, uh, he is the one that gave me that name. May Allah expand his grave for the good things that he did do. But then I found that later I needed to move from that whole entire experience. So in the late 80s, I left. Uh, even Imam Warf Dean Muhammad community uh, to move on to continue my studies and endeavors in Islam. Now how do you reason with someone, talk to someone from the nation to get them 
to understand, to come to the real Islam? Well, when you're talking to you have to understand that this person, first you have to see if they're sincere. There are some people that are in the nation of Islam that are very, very sincere. An example, I'm here in Canada right now, and they had the Caravana Fest. So we went downtown. We have a, uh, the Canadian Dawah Association, which I am the special advisor to. And I ask all people to go to our website, uh, Canadian Dawah Association website, and see the work we are doing every year. Uh, we just had a big conference here, as, Eddie, as you know, and we had uh, some uh, n names that are known, Loon, uh, we had Freeway, uh, Napoleon, uh, myself, Elaine Muhammad, and uh, these, and Dr. Lawrence Brown, and we just had a beautiful conference. But the big thing, when you're talking to someone from the Nation of Islam, you should know what you're talking about. And you should understand that this person sincerely believes this is the truth. So you shouldn't belittle him. You shouldn't just say you're wrong and everything, because everything is not wrong. When the devil wants to make a lie, he has to use some truth. That's the bait, but the hook actually is the lie. So when I approach them, I approach them and shake their hand, and they say, Assalamu alaikum. I will say, Wa alaikum salam. This is a dawah technique. Some Muslims might disagree with me, and I, could they say they're not Muslim, and we, we're not supposed to get us salam. But I'm using dawah techniques, and when I shake their hand, and they, and they feel that I'm sincerely, sincerely caring about them, they open up. So what happened this weekend, one was out selling the Nation of Islam paper or whatever it was this weekend downtown Toronto on Young and, and Dantas. And I was sitting under the umbrella, the Islamic umbrella table, and he walked up to me and he was looking like back and forth and I didn't understand. I guess he was looking to see if his brothers was watching him. And he sit down, someone told him that uh, there's a brother that was in the Nation of Islam, he's older, and he used to be the former bodyguard of Muhammad Ali as well as Farrakhan. And he is knowledgeable of the Nation of Islam. So he came and asked me, very softly, he said, excuse me, he said, why did you leave the nation? You was in the nation? I said, yes. He said, why did you leave the nation? That was his question. I said, well, to the death of the leader. And I said, after that happened, I was looking and searching for something that would help me. And I had a problem with the picture of Master Farah Muhammad. I told him the whole spill. And I said, brother, I said, you're searching. I told him, I said, you're searching right now. I said, when you find what you need to find, I said, embrace it. I said, that's true Islam. I said, Allah is going to guide you. I said, but when, he, when you see the guidance, and accept it. And so I didn't have a lot of time to talk to him because he had to go. I said, I gave him my telephone number. He took it. He wanted to make contact with me. And I think he had respect. So anyone that came from the nation of Islam and know how to give da'wah properly, we can reach those people. You know, and I hope that Minister Farrakhan, uh, you know, before he leaves this life, that he clears this and make it very clear that la ilaha la Muhammad Rasulullah and clear this argument or clear this controversy up because people say, no, he's on the path. Some of them would say this. I said, well, when I read the back of the paper, when I buy the paper from them once in a while just to see if they change, you, if you turn to the back of the paper, it says the Muslim beliefs. These are not Muslim beliefs. And one of them says, and we believe in God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. This is, uh, is incorrect. Sheikh Nalayan, can you explain for our non-Muslim audience who are watching the show, and for also the people from the nation, what actually is the Islamic belief? Clear Islamic beliefs, you have what is known as the five pillars. The first pillar is our bad witness, there's no God but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. Uh, the next is prayer. The next is Zakat. The next is fasting during the month of Ramadan, and the fifth pillow is Hajj. These are the pillows, and they're known as pillows, which means they hold up something. And the chief pillow is La ilaha la Muhammad Rasulullah. Then you have what is known as the six articles of belief, which is very important. Is the belief in Allah? Is the belief in His angels? Is the belief in His books? Books, we mean the scriptures that were sent in the final revelation, which is the Quran. Is the belief uh, in his messengers and prophets. And the final prophet we know is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa And the belief in the day of judgment. And the belief in divine decree, which is very important. But when we come to Muhammad, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa this is where, when you're talking to people, 
They said, well, I never heard of Muhammad. Well, I'm going to give you a little joke. I never heard of Obama, right? And Obama is the president of the United States now. I never heard of him until the, his name came up in the elections. And he is the 44th president. I'm not sure. But he is the line of presidents. We do not follow the laws of George Washington today because why? Those laws are outdated. They wouldn't apply uh, to what well, the society and growth and development that has reached now. So Obama is in the link and line of the presidents that came before him, and he right now, we follow the laws enacted by Congress through President Obama. So with prophethood, the prophet started out with Adam being the first prophet of God and moving all through uh, the great prophets, Moses, uh, 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 David, uh, and Esau, Ali Salem, until we reached Muhammad. So Muhammad brought the final message that God had given to man to the day of judgment. The Quran makes it very clear that he is a rahmah, mercy to all mankind. Esau, Ali Salem, brought the message to a certain group of people. And he made it very clear. Some of the Christians read right in the Bible that this message was to this group of people. But the message of the Quran is to every human being. And that's why in Islam you find people from all different ethnic groups and races. Now we just have two minutes left. Can you tell us, Sheikh Elaine, as you had once so eloquently said, how can we avoid getting pimped by the shaitan, yes. the devil? Yeah, we have to be very careful. That sh I call him, uh, I did a lecture, at, as you know, at the uh, conference called Shaitan the Pimp. Yeah. And he's pimping the whole world. And if you don't want to get pimped by him, then you have to stay away from the enter entertainment halls of the pimp. What are the entertainment halls of the pimp? The movie theaters. Uh, you have to stay away from script clubs, uh, massage parlors, and people that talk filthy languages. And for a Muslim, he should stay around the Muslims who are seeking to be upright. Stay more, keep your heart and mind attached to the Quran, the Tawheed. Make sure that you have taqwa. And remember, you should have your your, uh, your iman, uh, your faith and belief, it should be as though you're walking through a garden that has a lot of thorns and that your iman is very fragile like cotton. And if you go through it and not careful, that cotton is going to get ripped. If you're not careful in this environment, young brothers, young sisters, whether male or female, whether old or young, then you're going to start to lose your iman. And in conclusion, it's just like this. If a horse is coming down a dusty road and you're standing on the side of the road, the horse might not run you over, but you're going to get some of the dust from that horse. So if you live in this environment, you're going to get some of the dust of kuf on you. So you have to be very careful. And Umar radiallahu an said, he said, the Muslim that mixes with the people and endure their harm is better than the Muslim who does not mix with the people and does not endure their harm. Thank you very much, Shay, for being with us. Thank you. And I'd like to just give a uh, say that I'm in Minnesota. I'm with the Masjid, Masjid Dawa, uh, Sheikh Hassan Jami. We need your support, saving the Masjid there. So please uh, go to our website, m, uh, mndawa.net, and support Masjid Dawa. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khairan. May the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah, reward you. Thank you. And that was the former bodyguard of the world champion, heavyweight champion, famous Muhammad Ali, who is a Muslim, who is one who's made a conscious decision to acquire peace by submitting himself, submitting his will to the will of the creator of the heavens and the earth, to be obedient, to be in line with what everything the creator wants him to do. That is what a Muslim is. So there are many many thousands of thousands of people who are coming to this beautiful way of life. The way of life that was lived by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Abraham, peace be upon him, Noah, these were just a few of the messengers that came with this way of life. They taught people the same religion, the same way. Do what God wants you to do. Do it on his terms. Acquire peace by submitting to the will of God by submitting to what the Creator wants you to do.
And the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with the same way, as a mercy. He was sent as a mercy to the world. So get to know a little bit more about us, about this wonderful way of life. Continue to come back here on The Dean Show. And if you want to accept the way of all the messengers, you can do it right now. You can call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And until next time, until we meet again, continue to tune in, make dua for us, and we'll see you, inshallah, God willing. Until then, peace be unto you. Come and see what everyone's talking about. Prove. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up for spreading God as one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. The, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes. You know? You get a few bad people, the media grabs a hold of that and spends it the way they want to. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is a tenet our faith to... It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me Oh Allah you see, oh Allah you know All the sins I do I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart I'm your sinful slave you're my loving Lord I'm the one who runs away Oh Allah guide me